Hello everyone, in this video we will talk about the grid, the CSS grid and how you can use it to style your elements. Uh, I will not go through the code and actual code examples, but I will kind of go through this th theoretically and actually show you on this website, there's a great website that talks about everything that you can set to a CSS grid. Um, because in my opinion, it would just take too much time for me to actually write the code and like test it out. Uh, so I can just go very quickly through this and then use a real world uh, CSS project, a, a real world website. And in there, I will use the CSS grid kind of in, in real world, right? So in my opinion, this is just a better way to do this. So uh, let me just start out by talking about this left part. In this left part, we have a styles that we can set to the container. So we have a container, right? Some sort of div. And then inside of the container, we have some sort of items. You can think of it as a uh, section on the website. So section on the website is a container. And inside the section, we have some articles, right? And the articles are actually the uh, items. Okay. So to the container, we can actually set the uh, display grid. So that basically tells the computer, hey, I want this to be displayed as a grid. You can also use inline grid. Uh, what that means? Well, inline grid is just on the one line. So one direction only on the X axis. Uh, the grid display grid will do both axes. So on the Y and on the X axis. Um, if you want to use the inline grid, I would probably recommend you go with a flexbox, right? In order to display something in an inline grid. But anyways, if you somehow want to use grid, um, you can always do it via grid, okay? But I think flexbox is just a better, better way to do this. All right, then we have like these two most important things that you can define in a grid. Uh, so this grid template columns is, in my opinion, the most important thing. Uh, for example, you want the grid to have like three columns, right? You can think of it as grid is basically a table and you are defining how many columns the table should have, right? And if you say, uh, yeah, it, I want like three columns of the same size, you can actually use a fraction uh, as a unit for this. So if you want uh, uh, three columns of the same size, you can just type one fraction, one fraction, and one fraction, okay? And this would just say um, one third and one third and one third, basically, okay? So this is just very easy to define how you want the table to actually look, okay? So this great template columns, uh, you can see it here on a example, right? You can just type these these uh, numbers, right? It can be any size you want, any, any unit you want. I highly recommend to use fractions, or percentage points. Uh, but as you can see, this is just that the first column will take 40 pixels, the second one will take 50 pixels, uh, the third one will take however it can, how much it can, uh, then we have uh, the fourth one 50 pixels and the last one 40 pixels. And this grid template rows basically does the same, but only this time it does it for rows. And you can see that this in here, it used actually percentage points. And I would highly recommend you do this also. Percentage points or fractions. But basically, uh, these two attributes are the most important one. You are defining uh, basically the layout of your table, of your grid, right? Then you can do some sort of more advanced stuff that you can somehow name these lines, name these columns, but I will just skip through this uh, because in my opinion, it's not that interesting and it's not, you don't really use it in, in real life, in my opinion. Uh, what you can also do is use this repeat function. Once again, it just simplifies things a little bit. So if you put, for example, uh, repeat uh, three times uh, one fraction or whatever, it would take like three columns, right? So just simplifying things a little bit. So right here is actually what I just talked about, right? One fraction, one fraction, one fraction. If you put in here, repeat uh, three and then comma uh, one fraction, it would be exactly as the same as writing this thing. And this is just a way to telling the computer, hey, I want the grid. Uh, I want the columns of the grid to actually have every one of these to have third, right? Of the available space. Um, cool. Then we can also define the grid template areas. Uh, so 
basically the areas is just a somehow you can name it right you can name uh, some sort of area in your uh, in your grid uh, so inside here you can see yeah so inside here you can see that item a uh, have the grid area of header all right so inside here you can see the header all right another thing that we can actually define is grid template areas um, you can basically just in here is a great example uh, so you can just define and basically name these uh, these cells in your grid okay so that at the top you have a header then you have two uh, cells that are named main then you have nothing so this dot means nothing uh, then you have a cell called sidebar and lastly you have four cells um, that have the uh, name of footer uh, but what you can do then is use these items right so you are currently styling a item and you are defining the grid area to the item okay so for example this item a have a grid area of header that means this is actually the item a it will take all the space all right then you have item b it will take the grid area of main so main are these two okay so it will take this thing right then we have sidebar and then we have footer it's very straightforward you can just name uh, the the grid cells and then use the, these names in order to style out your elements your items and put them uh, in some sort of uh, layout in your grid um, then what you also can use is a grid template a grid template is actually just a shorthand for setting uh, the grid template rows, uh, grid template columns and grid template areas. So I will just skip this because I would highly recommend you do uh, these separately, right? Definitely from uh, if you are a beginner, I highly recommend you do these separately. Another cool thing that you can actually define is a gap. So that's basically just a space between uh, those columns, for example, if you define a column gap. Uh, or if you define a row gap it's a space between those rows right so in here you can see that the row gap is 15 pixels and it's just a space between your rows the column gap is 10 pixels and it's just a space between your columns okay so it's as simple as that it kind of is very intuitive once again you can have a shorthand but i highly recommend you don't use it for now um, then what you can have also is justify items uh, so you can justify items at start and uh, center or stretch um, so let me just go through uh, all of these so if you justify items to start you are basically aligning them on the x-axis right justify items means align items on x-axis start means left and means right okay so all of these are aligned to right uh, center means on center right they are aligned in center in each of these cells uh, stretch means it will take all the space available right here so that's basically a very simple way how you can style uh, all of your table right so you are actually changing the x-axis in this thing uh, then if you do align items you are actually uh, modifying the y-axis okay so you can do align items start that means at the top uh, you can do align items end that means at the bottom you can do center so that means space between and you can do stretch it will take all the available space uh, then you have a shorthand right don't use it once again and lastly you have justify content so with this you are actually um, just um, moving the whole table if that makes sense so you have a grid container okay and then you have the whole content okay so the set of your items sort of and you can just use the justify content in order to style the whole set as a sort of table right to move the whole table around if that makes sense so if you moved it to start it will be aligned to the left if you move it to end it will be aligned to the right center it will be centered and you can also use stretch so it will stretch out okay but you can see it will stretch these uh, last two like more than the the middle one right um, you can also do space around so that means the space is kind of distributed and it's also uh, 
in front of the first one and behind the last one. Okay, so there is space in here and there is space in here. You can also do space between. That means there is just space between those elements, but there is no space in front of the first one and behind the last one. And you can also use space evenly. So that means there is an equal amount of space between those two. So the space evenly and this uh, space around might seem uh, might seem very similar. Uh, there is just the difference that the space in front of the last element and in front of the uh, and behind the uh, last element in front of the first element is smaller than the spaces between. Okay, but otherwise it's very similar. You can also use align content. Uh, so that's just aligning the whole table once again, but currently on the x axis. So uh, sorry, on the y axis. So uh, like this. Okay. Uh, so if you put it at start, that means all the way to top. If you put it at end, that means all the way to bottom. Center is centered. Uh, stretch means it will stretch out to take all the available space. You can also use space around. So there is also a space at the top of those items, right? But there is space between those rows and also space between. Uh, very similar. Once again, there is no space at the top and at the bottom. And you can also use space evenly. Once again, very similar to uh, space around, but the space is very is even, right? Um, so let me now actually go back and take a look at the properties of the children. So what we can actually define as a property of a children. So um, we can define a grid column start index and grid column end index. Uh, so uh, for example, it can be I think that here is a example. So we have a grid column start at the second. So this is the, the this would mean first one. This is the second and grid column end is at five. OK, so first, second, third, fourth. And, and it, it takes the fourth, but it's smaller than the five. Right. So until the fifth, um, then we have a grid row start once again, row one start. So that means in front of the first row, right? That depends how you name these things. Uh, but uh, you can just use numbers, right? If you put zero, it's the same thing. And if you put uh, row end uh, free, right? It means zero, first, second, and free, right? So until it is smaller than this number, it will fill the space. You can, once again, you can just use numbers. You don't necessarily have to name um, these uh, columns, right? These lines. You can also use something called span, uh, which is um, just uh, saying that from this start, right? So for example, from this grid row start, you will start at second. So zero, first, second. Okay. And you will add the span of two. So the next two rows. So this is the first one and this is the second one. OK, so you will just take two rows. Uh, you can define it via this keyword span. Uh, so this is just another way how you can uh, write it. Uh, if you put uh, five in here, it would be the same thing. Um, cool. You can also define a shorthand. Once again, I recommend you don't use it. Uh, for example, you can just say grid column will start at three and it will have a span of two, right? So it will start at this third one and it has the span of two, right? You can do it on one line, but uh, I think that it's actually uh, clearer to use it on, on separate lines, definitely from the beginning. Uh, cool. You can also define the grid area. So as we talked about before, if you name the areas in your grid, uh, you can say that this item will have a grid area of those names, right? So if you have um, somehow named the, uh, yeah, there it is, there is the example, right? Where we've named the template area, right? We've defined the grid template areas. Uh, then we can just assign some value to the grid area of an item and it will just take the available space uh, that, we've ta that we've defined in here, right? Uh, then we have justify content, justify self, sorry. So justify self uh, basically means that we are aligning self on the X axis. So basically the same thing that we did with the grid, but only this time we can override these settings of the grid. So if we want uh, 
all the elements to be displayed at center, we can define that in a grid. But if we want one of the elements to be displayed, for example, at the start, we can define it in the one element that we want to change, right? So this justify self start means it will be aligned to left, uh, end means right, center means center, uh, stretch means it will fill the avail available space. Um, same thing with align self, only this time it works on the y axis, right? So uh, start means stop, end means bottom, uh, center means center, <laughs> and stretch means stretch. Another thing that you also may want to use is the place self, which is once again a shorthand, right? So a single de declaration of align self and justify self. Um, once again, it's like fairly easy to center a element on the X and Y axis by display self, right? Place self center and it will be centered. Uh, yeah, it, it's very easy to use, but I would recommend from the beginning that you uh, do this separately. So you have two lines of code. But yes, this is pretty much it. This is pretty much how you can use grids in order to style any layout on your website. Um, so I highly recommend you uh, use this in some project. I will create a project, a real world website in, in the next week. So. Uh, if you want, you can hit the subscribe button, hit the no notification bell, uh, just to be notified when I release the new video where I will actually demonstrate the grid and the flexbox in a code. Um, so yeah, but with all of that being said, if you like the video, feel free to hit the like button, uh, feel free to subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye.